All right, last time we talked about the corridor in relationship to the sufferings of Christ. And uh, <clears throat> I'll be um, talking about that more. We'll talk about it some tonight. But remember that we talked about entering that corridor and some of the things that you go through in, uh, in the first part. The second part and the third or last third part. And we, what we saw was <clears throat> that many of the um, scriptures that we've been looking at fell into categories. Um, not only do the scriptures that we've been talking about throughout the book of First Peter fall into one of these categories, not all of them, but most of them, one of the two of these, uh, of the three of these categories. But the words, remember the words have definitions and the words all in their definition, strangely enough, are words that fit into one of the three of these categories. And um, once you really begin to understand, and we're, we're gonna go, we're gonna go some more, maybe not tonight so much, because I wanna, you notice I put this little guy who's about to enter the sufferings of Christ a little bit outside here before he's fully entered, because tonight I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about pre preparation in relationship to entering the sufferings of Christ and and what all that looks like and and means <clears throat> but um, then then we'll go back uh, maybe next class and uh, reiterate those things uh, I assume that everybody got a copy of class last week okay an audio okay so should you um, need to ref refresh that, go into a closet and listen to that class real quick and come back out and you can finish it with me. You could put it on real fast forward and listen to it. That's a joke. Okay, <clears throat> so the sufferings of Christ, I mean, even the, the very sound of it to some people really, really doesn't sound like a good thing. Um, <clears throat> Except, well, some people go, well, just the use of the word suffering and that I'm supposed to be in relationship to it somehow or another doesn't sound good. <clears throat> Others would say, oh, well, it's okay then because it's the sufferings of Christ. It's the sufferings of Christ. It's not my sufferings. Okay. But <clears throat> the whole point of Peter uh, is based on the fact that at times when Jesus was going through sufferings, he was oblivious. Uh, the, the three examples that always come to my mind immediately is, the first one is, um, Jesus begins to open up his heart and the plan to just directly to Peter. And, and he does it based on... <laughs> based on the fact that Peter said, Thou art the, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God, which we kind of have to understand that most of the Jews' understanding of what the Messiah, the Christ, same word, one's Greek, one's Hebrew, you kind of have to understand that their understanding of the Messiah was not correct. They thought, and you know this, most of you know this, they thought that when the Messiah came that he was going to, you know, defeat the Romans and uh, he was going to exalt Israel to the highest place in the earth so that they would be uh, a glorified people. And he was going to, you know, take care of all their needs and, of course, um, uh, and set up rule on the earth at that very time 
And, um, and so, you know, they, the disciples and the people, which we're talking about in multitudes, so we're talking 5,000 not counting women and children, and there's more women and children than the men. So um, uh, they kind of got an idea that this is the right guy because look what he can do. I mean, he can feed us. And it doesn't cost anything. And uh, he can he can heal us when we're sick. Uh, and guess what? You know, after after um, Lazarus, they're going. And if you die, this guy will bring you back. This is the Messiah. All right. So Peter had the common view of what the Messiah was. So when he says to Jesus, "Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." There's a good chance that Jesus is, is thinking, he, okay, he's, he's with me. He's, he's in tune because he said, <clears throat> flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, my Father. <clears throat> my Father has showed you this. All right. So Jesus' immediate reaction is to start talking about being the Messiah. The Son of Man has to, is going to go to Jerusalem and he's going to be badly treated by the, the, the Romans and by the chief priests and the, the you know, Sanhedrin and all of those religious leaders. <clears throat> and he will be crucified. He'll be put to death. And Peter's response, again, was... Not so, Lord. No, no. And I mean, was pushy so much so that, you know, because uh, he would be, you know, um, I love you. Wait a minute, Peter. You don't love me. You love the concept of me and you want to preserve that. But me as the Messiah, this is what I do. This is what I will be doing. This I give my life freely. I I lose that you might gain. Um, but because you don't understand this, then you savor the things that be of men and not the things that be. These are, the, these are not just uh, the things that Jesus is referring to. These are not just things of me, Jesus speaking to Peter. They're not just things of me pertaining to my mission. These are the things that are the things of God. You don't savor the things of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the way we are, not what I'm going to do. But in what I do, I'll be expressing the nature and the reality of God. And you don't understand that. OK, and, you know, with that, you know, within that, get behind me, Satan. All right. Well, that would hurt, you know, anybody's feelings. You know, you're one of the twelve. You think you're the closest one, and he calls you Satan. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, you know, that's discouraging. <clears throat> and then, of course, in the Garden of Gethsemane, and you don't need the whole story again like that one, but I felt like I needed to really help you remember the flow of what was going on there. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus goes in there. He's sweating great drops of blood. He's crying out. You know, Father, let this cup pass from me. And he does, he prays that prayer three times. You know, and in between each one, he goes and checks on the guys to see if they're with him. And they're not. And, you know, he wakes them up. You know, except the third time. But then it was time to get up because the, the guys were coming to take him away. So, um, Peter would think back on that after after you know Christ was crucified and, and especially after he saw him again um, and um, would realize how far off they were from being with Jesus in his sufferings. Paul calls it the fellowship of his sufferings that I may know him. He wants to know him in the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his sufferings and to be made conformable to his death. Well, we usually know the power of his resurrection and the, you know, made conformable to his death. But, but what if regularly 
when we get in certain situations, we self-protect and run from the sufferings of Christ and run from being with him in it. Because it was the it was the really bad situations, you know, where he he's at the fire and, you know, three people say, you're one of them. And, no, I'm not, you know. You cover up, you self-protect, you go, you know, I can you know, and this is this is part of what I want to talk about tonight is sort of the pre, uh, which could also bleed into the first uh, part of the corridor of the sufferings of Christ. Um, but part of it definitely is uh, in advance of it. In other words, like if this was all not just called the corridor, first, second, and third part of it, if this was just called the sufferings of Christ, this guy would be looking at the sufferings of Christ and have to mull some things over. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. And so, um, uh, there is a, uh, like I said, Paul talked about fellowship of his sufferings, to fellowship with him in it, to, to, can you imagine what Peter when he recognized that the greatest opportunities to not be about himself, but to be about Jesus and to be with Jesus in that way, he remembers clearly that every time somebody said, you're, you're one of them. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. And cussing and lying and covering up and doing everything to avoid that, that cloud called the sufferings of Christ. All right. So, that's, and we discussed this early on, but that's the reason why the book of First Peter is so powerful. Because the man got it eventually. He got it, and he got it good. And he got it so good that God said, I need you, not Paul, I need you to write a letter that's going to go for all not just all days, all weeks, all months, all years, but centuries and centuries and centuries and millennia. You know? And um, because, I mean, if you could see it like this, uh, Peter got it, he, and then he, he understood it, and then he had the wisdom to explain it. Can you see Jesus sitting on the throne and going, you know, he's, he's, he's got it. He's going to be with me from now on. We're going to be together in the, and fellowship in these things. And, and he's going to not run from them like I don't run from them, but I lay down my life. He's going to do the same thing. And he's just looking at it and, and, and feeling like, wow, you know, this feels so good. He's, he's with me now. You know, and, uh, you know, most of the time when we're going through suffering, all we want is people to to be with us or whatever. And there's a degree of that that is not just flesh or whatever. You know, I mean, there's a lot of suffering going on right now with the coronavirus and and to be to be with somebody that cares or that understands and really does it in a real way is precious. Well, apparently the Lord's no different in that he, but, but the difference is he wants us to be with him in his nature in the sufferings. And that's the, that's the third part over here. Well, or, or the second and third part, because there's kind of a transition between the two. But that's the, that's the, the end goal, the, which, you know, I, I say I can't remember if we've, what all we've talked about because I've studied this so much that I just feel like I've, I've covered so much. But the end, the end, the aim, the, the thing that is, this is about um, is the, the point where the glory comes isn't that this guy walks into the sufferings of Christ for Jesus and just suffers. The point is, number one, that he's in fellowship with Jesus in, the, in this way. Number two, that he allows Jesus' nature to bring him through the process. 
that it is that it is a like kind it is a likeness of kind that we are being with him and fellowshipping in lambness if you will the lamb of god lambness you know and i, I talk about this it almost doesn't matter what class i'm teaching them. you know you divide the, the sheep from the goats you know lambness it is it is that spirit that when he looks at the nations and gets ready to judge them he either sees lamb or and this is something i was saying last night he doesn't see lamb or goats in truth he sees lamb or whatever's not lamb which happens to be goats that's what he's looking for well you know we can we can teach this and we can have little little uh, opportunities you know like you know uh, somebody got into the refrigerator and ate my dessert and I will lay down my life for whoever did that you know you know wait you know part of this is a test you do realize that don't you it's it's written twice in there that the trial of your faith is is you know what's going on so um, uh, there is uh, there is this point of heart that that is necessary that we either have when we start the process of entering into the sufferings of Christ or that we gain it within the process which is totally possible you can you can fail at the first part and still end up with him in it which ought to be good news to everybody that you know no matter how badly you fail there's still that opportunity <clears throat> um, so there's the the heart that wants um, to be with him specifically okay so this is important a heart that wants to be with him in what he's going through and what he has gone through but what he goes through regularly because he's a lamb and this is the way he is and the other part is that it's not just a heart but it is a desire that the father be glorified by the son who gives himself through us and that there would be glory you know there's glory that comes to us too um not in the <laughs> it's the spirit of glory it's not the the exaltation and everybody fawning over us because we're so great it's not that but it is there is that spirit of glory that comes when life comes out of death in a true right spirit and that can only happen by christ so the heart god wants our heart okay the heart is um, uh, an action on our part a movement on our part to be with him jesus in these sufferings the second part is it's literally got to be not just for him it's got to be him to go through it in the spirit that is required or they're not really the sufferings of Christ. It's just us going through stuff and being, uh, doing it grudgingly, which is, by the way, in First Peter somewhere, I know where it's at, but, you know, just to show you that that's, that's an issue. That's an issue, you, you know. All right, so. Um, so I wrote down, there are two different approaches to the corridor having two different results. And this is, kind of talking about when you're just you know outside it's like it's like when you're prepared to to enter in two different approaches having two different results the corridor of the sufferings of christ and fellowship with him in it appears different depending on what we identify as the, the sufferings as all right so you could have let me go ahead and stick another person up here and let's uh, make this one a girl. She's worshiping the Lord. 
And this guy right here, the, the, the boy stick figure, he's, he looks at this, and, and I'll, I'll say that here, but he looks at, at, at this thing, you know, because it's the sufferings of Christ. Again, it's not a corridor or a phase one, two, three in that sense. It's just you see the sufferings coming. He looks at it, and to him, it just, it looks like, you know, the devil or something. And I've got all this written down here somewhere. You know, or, or mean people, or, you know, un, unfair justice, you know, injustice. Um, and so he sees it, and he sees one thing, this looming uh, wo woe is me, that he has an opportunity to maybe go in the opposite direction or just deny your way out of even entering into it. But she, she looks at it and she sees an opportunity to be with Christ in his sufferings. In other words, she sees, she sees it the, let me, can I say it like this? She sees the coming storm as something eternal that can bring glory to the Father and glory to the Son, and it can bring a tremendous opportunity for you to be with Him in this life, in this nature. All right. So, uh, so that's that's an initial thing right there uh, that that has to take place. <clears throat> Let me read that again so that you can see what I was trying to say. There are two different approaches to the corridor having two different results. This guy representing one and and her representing another. The corridor of the sufferings of Christ and fellowship with Him in it appears different depending on what we identify the sufferings as. He identifies the sufferings as just, you know, uh, again, the devil or someone, uh, an evildoer, but we don't even understand that term. It's just somebody that's out to get me or something like that. Okay. Two different views with two different outcomes. Okay. Um, so, so we see them, the, the sufferings in one of two ways, which I just described. Uh, the identification of a coming or present trial. So it's either a coming trial or you're in the middle of it and you're just going, oh my God, this is, this is the devil or whatever. <clears throat> um, the identification of a coming or present trial that you're in will either be identified by us as being, number one, the sufferings of Christ, or number two, as a strange fiery trial that comes from evil people, the devil, or some other source other than God. All right. So that's it. That's the, you know, there is no need trying to understand the, the, the different categories of the corridor or even understanding there is such a thing as a corridor. corridor. Um, if we don't really, we can't even figure out what's what. We can't figure out, well, this is, this is the sufferings of Christ, or this is just, you know, my, my grandmother being mean to me or something. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, so, um, 1 Peter 1, 5 through 7 says this. It's not like we hadn't been through 1 Peter 1, 5 through 7, by the way. <clears throat> Who are kept by the power of God. Kept. Okay, you're going to, you, you have to, you know, sometimes you get the opportunity in advance to think about it before you enter into it. Sometimes you don't. Okay. But if you just imagine that if you're out here trying to perceive it and you have this faith you are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation that He's going to bring you through this. 
because this is what he wants to do. And, it, and it's not just he wants to bring you through a trial or suffering. He wants the things that we talked about before. God being glorified, Christ living in us, us being with him. <clears throat> Kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed at the phase three or whatever. Part three of the corridor at, at the end. Um, <clears throat> At the last time, the last part of the sufferings, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. So you can, you know, if you're, I'm still using the girl as the example here. She, she can look over here and in faith, she can look all the way over here to where Christ is going to come forth in her and uh, in, in the spirit of the lamb. And she's going to be with him. And she greatly is rejoicing that this is going to happen. It's like, this is, this is going to be amazing, okay? Um, and it's going to be revealed at the last time, okay? At the last part of the whole process. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now, oops, okay, so, though now, as now we're not talking about faith, we're not talking about her faith to, to see the end and to desire to be with the Lord in that. We're talking about now. And right now is what you're going to go through in phase one. Okay? So now, now, you are in heaviness, if need be, through manifold temptations. All right, this the, the stuff's coming down. The storm is hitting. The... The clouds are rolling in, <clears throat> um, uh, and, and it's not a faith thing. You know, the, the, you have to maintain the faith of what's going on here and where it leads. And that faith, what does it say in another place in Peter? That your faith might be in God who raises the dead. Yeah, we haven't touched that verse. But that's what that's talking about too, see. It's talking about he'll bring you through this quote-unquote death oh, down here, this last part. Basically, it's just, a, it's just a glorified version of what happens at salvation, except for this is in this life. And, and it's not salvation uh, uh, to heaven. It is the salvation of your soul. All right. So, uh, that uh, the next verse, verse 7, uh, that the trial of your faith, remember, kept through by the power of God through faith, this long distance belief down here, that the trial of your faith. So, she's, she's seeing this as, this is testing my, this is testing my faith that with what hope? It's not even right here. Uh, no, it is. Okay, She's, this is testing my faith that I, I can be with the Lord, that I can not open my mouth and have to rail back and become a evildoer like the ones that are persecuting me, that I can show forth the glory of the Lamb in this way, okay? Um, that the trial of your faith being much more precious to whom? To God. And I've mentioned this before, but the word precious is quite preeminent or, or prevalent, shall I say, is quite prevalent in the book of 1 Peter. Why? Because for the most part, it is either it is precious to him based on the spirit in which we go through this. It is precious to him or we have uh, understood and perceived the preciousness and and it's become precious to us okay can you think of any scripture in first peter that talks about precious still right here in the first chapter uh yes but we're not going to talk about it right now um that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth okay so here he's saying um that uh, we may not perceive it in this verse, though it's going to be said over and over again. Um, 
he is regularly pointing out that which endures. And what he's referring to is this, this trip, if you will, this experience, this reality, the, the spiritual reality of this experience of being with him and, and understanding his nature and, and experiencing these horrible things by the Spirit of Christ are enduring more than gold. They are precious and they're enduring. Okay? A whole other area that we'll get into. Uh, though it be tried with fire. Okay? So, here's the trial. And it's being tried with fire. And it's going to find out if the gold comes to the top. Or the dross. Well, I don't know. And this isn't right. And so and so shouldn't have been doing this. And then he got those people on their side. And then all this. And then I ended up being the scapegoat of the whole thing. And da 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 da. Okay. Well, you just failed the test. Okay. The truth is, if you don't perceive this correctly over here, you failed it before you started. Okay. Though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing, down here in the third part, at the appearing of Christ in this little girl, in, in this little vessel. That Christ in his nature and in the beauty of the Lamb could appear in her. Now it can appear, appear in this guy too. His, his neck's a little long, but... It can appear to that guy, uh, but it's all in how you perceive what Peter's trying to communicate. All right, so one more scripture along those lines about this is, this is a, a, a test um, by God um, to see where we're at, okay? I mean, Jesus could have... Um, when they when the when the people came to take him the soldiers and everybody came to take him he he could have separated himself in such a way that the disciples were never exposed to it okay he could have he could have he could have said y'all stay here in the upper room enjoy the fellowship or whatever and i'm just going to take a little walk you know alone just talk to the father you know and they're okay you go ahead man and then they come take him and they wouldn't be exposed to it it's not being exposed to it. It's a trial. It's who's going to run away, who's going to not run away, but, but deny what? Deny entering into his fellowship, his, this, fel this fellowship with him. All right. So here we go. This is uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 12 through 14. Still thinking about the trial. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Okay, and that's what this fellow right here is doing. He's just looking at all of this as just a big trial, just a big suffering thing that has nothing to do with God. It's just, you know, the enemy, as it were. Don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened. So he's saying from this very onset, before we get into the chambers of the corridor, um, you need to have an understanding of what's coming and be able to identify it as the sufferings of Christ. And as such, be prepared here. So that if you're prepared here, you'll enter into them. You'll go phase by phase. You might even get into the first part and slip and go, oh man, you know, we'll talk about that. I don't know, probably not tonight now. We'll, but we'll talk about this, this, you know, the failures, because there are failures, but those failures are not the end of the story, you know. And that's, you know, that's part of the problem with a lot of people is they, they measure everything by their failures, you know. Well, I've, uh, you know, I failed this and this and so I, So they say, I failed this, I failed this, I failed this, so I'm a failure. Okay. Well... No, you're not. You don't, at least you don't have to be. But if you deem yourself that, nobody can take that away from you. You're going to have to give it up. But I, you know, I've always looked at like the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 11 and you know they call it the the faith chapter or or the heroes of faith or the hall of faith you know but but the hall of faith i mean this is where you walk through and look at the picture of each one and a little thing underneath that says what they did and you know and you but if you read the bible story about them they had lots of failures and god remembers the things that are dear endearing precious to him and he sticks that in there doesn't mention all the other junk mentions abraham doesn't go well you know there was ishmael you don't go you know he didn't go there so you know you can be this guy and have your reservations and get in here and fail and you can still you can still make it through this thing and if you don't make it through this one you'll learn some things you will learn some things and if you really want the lord he'll give you another opportunity okay <clears throat> or several more you know because <clears throat> because nothing's really tried and true until it's been tried several times and c come forth as true come forth as gold all right um as though some strange thing happened unto you you know stop acting that way buddy um but rejoice as uh in as much as you are partakers of christ's sufferings that when his glory so rejoice in as much as you're partakers so that when his glory which is down here in 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 phase three i forget it was another word i used a while ago and it was better because we're using phase a lot on this stuff what was it uh, chamber yeah uh, this third chamber that's where the glory comes it, and it doesn't just come to jesus and the father it it envelops everything because it's eternal all right um that you may be glad with exceeding joy all right though need be for a time you are going through suffering through manifold trials uh may be uh, ye may be glad with exceeding joy. Just depends on where you are, what chamber you're in at the time. You know, um, I'm not going to say that. Verse 14, uh, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you for the spirit of glory. There it is. And of God resteth on you. Well, can you believe that that spirit of glory doesn't just it manifests down here it is it is rejoiced in down here but it can start right here at, before you enter in it can start in the first chamber it can it can it can be prevalent in the second chamber the spirit of glory you can be so with the lord that you know what you're going through and you won't be moved now your first couple of times around <laughs> You probably will be more than moved, but we won't talk about that. Um, <clears throat> on their part, he is evil spoken of. Okay, so this girl, on, on their part, the people who, who conceived this horrible scenario that God also conceived, they call it, yeah, an evil device, like like the... The, the Pharisees and the chief priests and everything, they worked up this evil device that ended up killing Jesus. Well, guess what? The father had a, the same device and worked with it and allowed Jesus not to be murdered, but to be a beautiful sacrifice. Okay, so on their part, you know, the people who conceived this suffering, um, you know, she is evil spoken of. But on your part, she is glorified. Okay. And so, anyway, I, uh, wow. I really, I really think I should stop here. Um, but I do have much more. I'm just getting started on this uh, this picture um, that we're seeing because there's going to be a um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to 
take you again, you know, more slowly with more scripture uh, into these separate chambers of the sufferings of Christ. And we'll show you like we've done tonight, but in different other places, <clears throat> um, the words, the process that it uses. Uh, and it, and somewhere in this juncture, then you know, because I want to I want to finish this. I mean, it's not like it's a whole lot, but it's too much for tonight. <clears throat> I want to finish this little thing that we started tonight, and hopefully next week we can do that. Uh, and then I want to get back into the phase two of what we're trying to do in the big picture with the sufferings of Christ, which is to go through the words and the definitions because uh, I think the Lord has shown me a really, really good way uh, to help us see the magnitude of the words and the definitions and how very intricate, intricate they are and how they, all these words rely on one another. It's like they're a family with one declaration that they want to make. These words are like that. They're like a family of words that are screaming reality together and individually. So I think the Lord's shown me a way that I can, uh, uh, I can do that. Uh, which that would probably not be next week, but Lord willing, the week after. <clears throat> All right. You ready to pray? Y'all still hungry? Y'all bored with this yet? Somebody ought to send me a, a text or email and just tell me if you're enjoying the class or you're, you're I'm going too long or you enjoying, you know, getting something out of it. Let's pray. Father, we are here and we are hungry. We are here and we want to hear your word out of 1 Peter. Not Randy's word, not my pitiful explanations of the glorious book of 1 Peter, but your word and your heart and, and your view and and and. and even all of that as you were able to um, send it through the vessel called Peter. That we might understand you in these things and that we might partake. And that we might fellowship and that we might uh, imbibe of this reality that it becomes part of us, that it becomes DNA in us, that it becomes Christ in us. Father, help us all, each individually and collectively. Some may be getting more than others. Lord, if it's if necessary, Lord, put it on some's heart if they're, if they're not getting it, to just maybe check in with somebody else who's in the class and see if they can help them to grasp uh, any confusing parts that I uh, I'm unable to to put in a way that can help each one. Father, like the words of First Peter, and like they're a family and they wanted to declare this together, Father, may we, of new creation and of of all the the ones that are on Skype with us that are family, we're family. We're we're not even new creation first. We are family, and we are family in your heart. We are family to your heart. And uh, may, we, may we become like those words toward one another, supporting, supporting the meaning of each one till we all come to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.